Welcome back to the lab, my guinea pigs. Today in this video we will explore the AY sound chip and its history. So first we will uh, do a deep dive into its technology and its capabilities. And then we will do a fun experiment. We will try to make the AY sound chip from the Auric to play an arcade video game soundtrack, exactly like it is on the arcade itself. So let's get started. This chip was made by General Instrument in 1978. It's just a three voice sound generator. We will look into that a little bit later. It has been used in a lot of arcade games, right? In pinballs too, right? When, when you when you'll hear the sounds, you'll recognize instantly the pinball sounds. But also on the Vert Vectrex, uh, the Amstrad CPC, the MSX. Also, it was uh, produced as a, in sound cards for the Apple II and the TRS-80, and of course the Auric as well, uh, like, you, like we said. The chip came in a lot of uh, variants. Uh, so there is the 8910, the 8912, and so on, right? Um, there are just what changed between one or, or the other is the amount of extra IOs those uh, chips had. They added IOs because they, they already thought about integrating that to a platform. The 8912 is the most common variant uh, with only one set of IOs. The original one had um, IOs A and B, and this one has al always A. Only A, sorry. When you look at um, the pin set, right? You see uh, the three analog channels, uh, analog channel A, B, and C. Those are the outputs. Usually, they are tied down to the same um, to, to the same speaker, right? And uh, you have uh, we were talking about those, right? Those IOA uh, from IOA zero to to seven. Uh, it's pretty classic. Basically, you you you. Uh, it's an adapter between a bus and uh, IOS to flip uh, or like uh, check if somebody inserted a coin, for example, in an arcade game. And on the right hand side, you have some signals like BC1, BC2, BD, BDR, A8, right? Those controls the, um, uh, the bus that is shared between the data bus and the address bus. That, that's why those pins are called DA0, DA1, and so on, right? It's because sometimes it's data, sometimes, sometimes it's address. So you have 16 uh, registers that are addressed uh, through those, uh, those pins. And of course, one of the most important one is the clock, right? Because the, the clock is gonna be the base to generate the sounds themselves. So let's look at the architecture of this chip. So on the left hand side, you see uh, reg address and latch decoder. Those are the inputs, right? Like the, those DA0 and so on we were talking about. Those maps to registers, so R0 to R17, so 18 registers, and they map to various features. The R0 to R5s are, are mapped to the tone period, which is basically the input to the tone generators that can only generate uh, square waves, right? And on top of that, you have um, a noise feature, right? Like when you want to have to add a, some like kind of a, a crash, we will we, we'll, we'll explore that uh, uh, just after that. But when you when you want some like a, some crash type of uh, sound, right? Then you have a control a control register, the R7, right? that uh, controls how do you want a tone only, a tone and noise, and, and so on. Uh, the noise is actually on all those um, outputs, ABC, at the same time. You see that it, it comes to the uh, mixer as a, a force uh, voice. Uh, then you have some uh, control, right? You, you want to be able to change the, the shape of the sound, right? And the volume of the sound. So first the volume, uh, those were R10 to R12 which is called amplitude, which is basically the volume, the main volume. You can change that pretty uh, quickly, right? So you can modulate those uh, pretty well. Again, we'll see that a little bit later. Um, and then uh, we have what we call the envelope. Uh, so the envelope is basically uh, a kind of a local shape 
uh, that controls uh, kind of the um, uh, texture of the sound, right? Again, we'll see that a little bit later. And you can imagine that as amplitude, but very, very sh uh, short, short term, right? That actually can modify the shape of those uh, uh, square waves. And the last ones are mapped to the IO, um, uh, IO ports, right? We were talking about IO ports A and B. For the Auric, we only have A, right? Um, so all those go to the right hand side. So the envelope generator and the, and the amplitude control are uh, directly influencing the, the digital analogic converters, right? Uh, that takes the inputs from the from the tone generator and the noise generator towards the three channels we saw. So it's a very simple chip. To experiment a little bit with this AY sound chip capability. Uh, let me show you the Vortex Tracker 2. A tracker is like a program that basically executes a kind of a script that is very tailored to the platform chipset you are working on, right? I do remember on the Amiga, right? You had a lot of those like uh, pro trackers and so on, right? And they basically represent in something that is intermediate between uh, hardware interfacing and a music representation uh, uh, of what you want to create. Right? And like uh, demo demo creators or game creators were using that to basically make uh, electronic music, basically. So this is a Windows program I run on, on my Linux with Wine. Uh, and as like, like usual trackers, right? You have like a window with like your song uh, and you have like a notes, right? It's, it's pretty uh, classic. So if I open a file, right, you, you'll see how, how, it, um, how it plays out, right? Uh, so you have uh, you have samples, right, with patterns, you can go uh, and so on, and then you can, you can play the song. So in the tracker, if you create a sample with just a tone, uh, no noise and no envelope, it produces this. So you see it, it is a perfect square wave. So now let's enable the envelope feature. Here let's try out the envelope E, which is um, a triangle shape. You can see that the, the square shape is basically cut by the, the triangular shape, right? So it makes like kind of cut triangles. It adds some texture to the sound. And let's try a couple others. Okay, it's time to move on to uh, the little e experiment I was talking to you about uh, right before. So what I wanted to do is uh, look at uh, platforms like arcade platforms uh, that was were based on the same uh, AY sound chip than the Auric and try to replay uh, their music. I found Mount Patrol uh, that had two uh, AY uh, sound chips. So those arcade um, games, right, they they, uh, they just added hardware when they, they wanted. So they had like several microprocessors or several like uh, sound chips and so on. They were not cheap in terms of, um, of hardware. Uh, but luckily, only one of those is in use for the music. The other one is used for uh, all those like uh, various sounds, like explosions and so on, right? My initial idea was to take the MAME uh, debugger. So MAME is um, uh, an arcade um, emulator. Trigger, trigger the debugger and uh, make uh, a kind of a watch. You can add watches uh, uh, on this debugger and dump all the all the, the commands the arcade uh, was giving to the AY sound chip. But looking into this, I realized that people in the uh, chip tune uh, community, right, all those musicians making those uh, sounds and so on, right, they have like a preservation we we website uh, that, that is doing exactly this. They are actually capturing on those uh, uh, arcade games. Um, all the commands that are sent to those uh, sound chips. It's called VGM. Uh, and, and, uh, and the captures are called uh, VGM rips. Um, so let's look at the VGM uh, spec. Uh, it's pretty easy uh, when you look at it. Uh, there are like some uh, fixed structures and then uh, you have like a, a kind of a, 
the list of commands like uh, one by one with some timings uh, in there. So let me walk you through this little project I did, right? So what I, what I did is I used the compiler called CC65. Uh, CC65 is um, a 6502 uh, compiler. Right? Um, it, it works pretty well. So um, because I, I didn't want to use um, assembly language to be honest to, uh, to do this. And uh, what, what I did, right, is basically uh, first a little converter uh, called bin to, to array uh, that, that takes a VGM, right, it's a little Python uh, script, and basically uh, put a header, like an assembly, an assembly header, you, you can see there, and basically dump uh, in binary the VGM file into uh, its um, its byte data representation. Okay, let's see let's see how how it looks like. So you have few options at the beginning, and uh, basically a cool stuff. <laughs> the entire byte array that is basically the, the file. Why, 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 why did I do that? Is because we, from the ORIC, I cannot load the file from uh, the disk, right? So I wanted to bundle it with uh, my program. Uh, then I made myself a little script, right? Where I convert automatically the, um, the array at the beginning, and then I compile basically my, uh, with the target uh, Atmos for the Oric Atmos. My little C program will see. Uh, will look uh, look into it uh, shortly after this. And this converted byte array, right, to uh, to link it with, uh, together. And and the output format is tap like tape. Um, and uh, you'll see uh, how we can use it on the Oric. So let's look at the header file. So what I did here is basically I took the speci specification, right, that I showed you before, this entire thing, and con converted that with the correct types, you see like the number of bytes, to the correct structure, right. For example, at the beginning I have the ident, which, is, which should be uh, basically this, like the VGM ident, right. And and so on, right? Like uh, with like a uh, strict type and sign unsigned int 32t and so on, right? That I took from the std int. I define all those fields. Um, I did the minimal that was uh, useful for me for the version we, uh, uh, we we have for this specific file, right? And then I made a player for for this file on the ORIC. So the first thing I need to do, right, the, this file is basically a mapping between what happened on the arcade machine, right, taking like recapturing uh, what, uh, what register and what value was set um, at, at what time, right. Uh, so the first thing I need to do is to define a way to set on the ORIC exactly the same register and value than what happened on the, on this uh, arcade. Uh, it's a little bit convoluted on the on the um, on the ORIC because the uh, AY sound chip is not mapped directly to an address space on the CPU, like on the arcade um, uh, thing, right? Uh, I have to go through the 6522. And actually poke into the those uh, um, like virtual addresses and uh, space right from behind the IOs that are managed by the 6522. That's why uh, when I define uh, with this inline assembly uh, the register and value set uh, for my program, I have to do all this gymnastic like uh, poking into uh, those uh, uh, those addresses that are actually mapped to the 6522. But you know what? I made that work and now for us it's kind of abstracted 
anytime we call this ay uh, function right it, it pokes this value to this register right one of those 16 registers we were talking about before um, then we need the timing so that's why i define also this function right uh, it's i did that a little bit like um, empirically like say like i just tried trial and error until it, it sounded right uh, because here, for example, we do like way more cycles than what happened on the arcade itself, right? So, I, I'm, and the arcade is a little bit slower than what, what I have on the um, on the Oryx. So, yeah, I tried various values and divided by 4 was actually the, the thing that worked. So, let's go into what I, I, I did. Uh, so, first, I check if what has been injected is uh, the ident is actually well a, a VGM, right? Uh, then I print out like small, uh, like some statistics uh, about what I loaded. It was go good for to debug the, uh, this program, right? Uh, and then basically I go through um, the entire file and in interpret like command by command what needs to be done, right? Uh, so for example, here I have if this is a wait command, right? Like so, so wait as it's a constant I define in my. Uh, in my header, uh, so for example, here it's um, let's say this one where it is. Yeah, this one, sixty-one. Wait n samples, um, and so on. Right. So this is this one, and uh, I just get through the through the cycle, right, and I just wait, and I go to the next one, right, and these loops until it encounters uh, the end, right? There is like a special uh, like um, sentinel value that tells you that that's the end of the of this thing. Uh, and if we uh, we have a loop, right? I just loop uh, through it by resetting the pointer I used here to, to basically pass this uh, little uh, script. Um, so I just uh, compile it, right? Uh, and um, that gives me uh, this file vgm.tape that I can copy uh, to to uh, the card that can, I can poke in uh, in the in the Erebus. So let's see if it works. Hey my guinea pigs, thank you for watching. Uh, I hope you learn a, a thing or two. Uh, of course, I will share all the source code and, uh, and scripts on uh, on my GitHub page, and uh, I share that in the comments below. If you if you like the video and uh, if you have other subjects uh, we can experiment with, like feel free to um, uh, to like the video and make uh, make comments below. Thank you.